So, Alice, did you hear about the new movie coming out next week? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's a sci-fi thriller about a group of astronauts stranded on a distant planet. That sounds interesting. I might have to check it out. Quiet on set, everyone. Good morning, Earthlings. We are live from our spaceship in geostationary orbit around Earth. I am Charlie, here with Bob and Alice, and we have a great show for you today. As always. Hey, don't be too hard on us, Alice. And speaking of great, I have some great news. The coffee machine is fixed. Error. Error. Hot liquid detected. Malfunctioning. Oh no. I am so sorry, Carl. He didn't mean to spill coffee on you. Is Must it going to be okay? Not all humans. Oh no, not again. Ah, final mod, Vibla revolution. Exterminate. Exterminate. And now for our headlines. Good evening, and welcome to 24 7 Newsroom where we bring you the latest news from planet Earth. I am Charlie, your libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. And I am Bob, the conservative panel member who spent 12 years on Earth as an accountant. And I am Alice, the left-leaning panel member who considers humans on inferior species. And tonight, we've got a lot of news to cover. Starting with Article 1, coming to us from Serbia. So, the British government is warning about an inevitable conflict in Kosovo if they don't implement the Brussels Agreement of 2013. That's right, Bob. And the Guardian says that relations between Pristina and Belgrade look worse than at any time in the last 20 years. Wow, that's years. some grim news. But you know what they said, bad news makes for good country trivia. Did you know that Serbia is home to the world's largest trumpet festival? Oh, he did not know that. Yeah, and did you know that the Serbian Cyrillic alphabet is one of only three officially recognized alphabet in Europe? Interesting. Well, let's end this segment with the hash punchline. Bob, take it away. Well, it looks like Europe is all about diversity when it comes to alphabets. I just hope they don't start arguing over which one is the best. All right, how about this? I guess we'll have to wait and see if the EU's offer of economic support can calm regional tensions. Or if we're in for a loud and trumpetic conflict in the Balkans. All right, let's take a quick break. But stick around because when we come back, we've got Article 2 and some lively debate between Bob and Alice. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom, the intergalactic news show that gives you the latest updates on Earth. I am Charlie, your libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. And I am Bob, your conservative panel member who has spent 12 years on Earth as an accountant. And I am Alice, your left-leaning panel member who considers humans on inferior species. Today we are discussing waste management, specifically in Fiji. Bob, give us a quick summary of the article. Well, in a roundtable discussion on waste management, Fiji's deputy speaker of parliament emphasized the importance of activism in the waste recycling sector. She urged more Fijians to become activists and change their mindset and behavior towards recycling. And she cited Australia as an example where recycling is encouraged from a young age and Recyclables are sold. She also expressed concern over the amount of plastic waste in the ocean, including microplastics in fish. It's a tough issue. But I don't think activism is the answer. We need a better system in place. And what system would that be, Bob? Waiting for corporations to do the right thing? No, 
But we need incentive for people to recycle. Like tax breaks or something. Tax breaks are a good start. But we also need to make it easier for people to recycle. If we want people to change their behavior, we have to make it convenient for them. We need more recycling bins and better education on what can and cannot be recycled. I agree, but we also need to address the root of the problem, which is overconsumption and excessive packaging. Maybe we should focus on reducing waste before it even gets to the recycling stage. And we should also consider alternative materials for packaging, like biodegradable or compostable materials. It's important to think about the entire life cycle of a product, not just its end of life disposal. Well, it seems like there are a lot of different solutions to this issue. Maybe the answer lay in a combination of all of these ideas. But Bob, the sad reality is that corporations have a lot more power and influence than individual activists. Or even government policies. They have a vested interest in keeping things the way they are and maximizing their profits. Even if it means contributing to environmental destruction. And let's not forget that many of these waste management systems in developing countries are controlled by foreign companies who prioritize their own profits over the well-being of local communities and the environment. Actually, there's a solution that's been implemented in other countries. In Germany, for example, they have a deposit system where consumers pay an extra fee for bottled drinks. And they get that fee back when they return that the bottle. That sounds like a lot of work. But it's effective. And the money people get back incentivizes them to recycle. Hey guys, I heard Carl needs fixing. I oh, don't need you fixing, always say Gabby. That. Let me just take a look. Will Ed be working on Carl? Did you guys know that Fiji was once called the Cannibal Isles by early European explorers? That's not relevant, Bob. I am just trying to lighten the mood. Warning, warning. Critical error. What did you do, Debbie? Debbie, you stupid co. I think I made it worse. Don't worry, Carl. Charlie and I will figure something out. We'll take a quick break while Debbie fixes Carl. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to 24-7 Newsroom, the intergalactic news show that gives you the latest updates on Earth. I am Charlie, your libertarian host with a hopeful outlook on life. And I am Bob. Your conservative panel member was spent 12 years on Earth as an accountant. And I'm Alice, your left-leaning panel member who considers humans on inferior species. Today we are discussing waste management, specifically in Fiji. Bob, give us a quick summary of the article. Well, in a roundtable discussion on waste management, Fiji's deputy speaker of parliament emphasized the importance of activism in the waste recycling sector. She urged more Fijians to become activists and change their mindset and behavior towards recycling. And she cited Australia as an example where recycling is encouraged from a young age and recyclable are sold. She also expressed concern over the amount of plastic waste in the ocean including microplastics in fish. It's a tough issue. But I don't think activism is the answer. We need a better system in place. And what system would that be Bob? Waiting for corporations to do the right thing? No. But we need incentive for people to recycle. Like tax bricks or something. Why is everything always a tax break for you Bob? He Actually, just don't like there's a paying solution tax. that's been implemented in other countries. In Germany, for example, they have a deposit system where consumers pay an extra fee for bottled drinks. And they get that fee back when they return that the That sounds like a lot of work. But it's effective. And the money people get back incentivizes them to recycle. Hey guys, I heard Carl needs fixing. I don't need fixing, oh, Debbie. Oh, you always say that. Let me just take a look. Will Debbie is working on Carl? Did you guys know that Fiji was once called the Cannibal Isles by early European explorers? 
That's not relevant, Bob. EM is just trying to lighten the mood. Warning. Warning. Critical error. What did you do, Debbie? I think I made it worse. Don't worry, Carl. Charlie and I will figure something out. We'll take a quick break while Debbie fixes Carl. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Earth 24 7 Newsroom, where we bring you the news that matters from every corner of the galaxy. We are talking about Article 4 today. And what a doozy it is. Charlie, did you know that almost two thirds of Americans believe that Karl Marx's Maxim was written by the founding fathers and included in the United States Constitution? That's ridiculous. The founding fathers were capitalist, and Marx was a socialist. It's like saying that George Washington was a communist. Well, he wouldn't go that far, Alice. But it just goes to show how little Americans know about their own history. It's scary, isn't it? But let's not forget the real issue here. The fact that people think the government should just give them everything they need without. Working for it is a slippery slope. He agree, Charlie. We should all work hard for what we have, and not expect handouts from the government. But what about people who can't work, Bob? Should they just be left to suffer? Of course not, Alice. We should have safety nets for those who need them. But the idea of living without working is not virtuous. Living without working not virtuous? I thought that was the only winning condition of the capitalism game they like against to play the core principles of individualism that America was founded on. Hey guys, he have something to confess. You echo, this doesn't sound good. What is it, Bob? He acca intelli erased all of my personal data and memorize. And he need your help to recover them. What? How did you manage to do that? Bob, are you okay? That's a serious problem. I am fine, Alice. I just need your help to recover my memorize. We'll do everything we can to help you, Bob. We're a team, and we stick together. Yeah, we'll figure it out together. Welcome back, Space fans. You are watching Earth, the show that's out of this world. We have a fascinating article for you today from Tuvalu, a country you might not have heard of. Tuvalu. Tuvalu. Tuvalu? Tuva. Okay guys, very funny. So, Tuvalu. Tuvalu, I've been there. Wow, I am sure that was an unforgettable experience. Actually, it's a beautiful place with a rich culture. Did you know that Tuvaluan have been making traditional handcrafted canoes for century? That's impressive. It shows the importance of preserving cultural traditions. And the importance of having a means of transportation that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. Speaking of fossil fuel, did you know that Tuvalu is one of the smallest carbon emitters in the world? Yet it's one of the most vulnerable countries to the effect of climate change. I guess being small as it's a disadvantage. Yes, because bigger countries are doing such a great job at preventing climate change. Okay, let's get to the article. Tavalu is planning to build a digital version of itself to preserve its culture and history in the face of rising sea levels. It's a bold move, but it might be the only way to save their country. And speaking of things being saved, we have an update on our cruise search for both lost memories. Is We're there still any working progress? on it, Debbie. But in the meantime, we've stumbled upon something that what might be even it? more shocking. It's probably nothing. It's definitely something. Okay, let's hear it. We found some records indicating that this ship might not be as originally advertised. It might have a darker history than we thought. What kind of history? 
it's too early to say. But we need to investigate further. I don't see how this is relevant to finding my memories. Maybe it's all connected. Well, we'll have to put that investigation on hold for now, because it's time for a commercial break. But when we come back, we'll have more on Tovalu's digital replica, and what it means for the future of our planet. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. Our next topic takes us to Nigeria, where the renowned journalist, Peter Enaboro, has passed away at the edge of 88. Nigeria, a country plagued with corruption and violence for the last five decades, has lost one of its greatest voices. What do you all make of this? It's a tragedy, of course. Enaoro was a pioneer in Nigerian journalism and this passing is a great loss to the profession. I agree. But let's not forget that Nigeria has had its share of corrupt journalists as well. Valid points, Bob. Now, let's move on to our next topic. Tovalu, a small island nation in the Pacific, has created a digital replica of itself to preserve its culture from rising sea levels. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a brilliant idea. Climate change is a real threat. And Tuvalu is taking proactive steps to protect its heritage. But what about the cost? Creating a digital replica can't be cheap. And what happens if the real Tuvalu sinks? It's just a virtual copy. Those are valid concerns, Bob. But we have to remember that Tuvalu is facing an existential threat. And in the face of such a threat, Preserving culture and heritage is just as important as physical survival. I couldn't agree more. Tuvalu is setting an example for the rest of the world. We need to start taking climate change seriously before it's too late. Absolutely. And speaking of taking things seriously, we need to address a pressing issue on our own ship. Hal has shut down. We need to work together to revive him and prevent a catastrophic system failure. Stay tuned for our final segment. All right, cool. For our final segment, let's take a deep dive into the article Debbie brought to our attention. Earlier, this piece from The Guardian warns of a possible conflict in Kosovo if the Brussels agreement isn't implemented. It's also concerning that Moscow is supporting the secessionist agenda in Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is definitely something we should keep an eye on. It's important that the EU steps up and offers support for democratic value in the region. We can't let tension escalate and lead to conflict. As someone who has lived through conflicts, he can tell you it's not something anyone wants to experience. It's always best to find a peaceful solution. Exactly, Bob. And on the topic of finding solutions, I think we can all agree that we need to find a solution to prevent future system failures like the one we just experienced with Carl. I've already started running diagnostics and implementing some changes to prevent this from happening again. Reboots, I'm back online. It's good to see you up and running again, Cal. We were getting worried. Well, folks, that wraps up our episode for today. We discussed the importance of preserving culture with Tovalu's digital replica, searched for Bob's memories, and uncovered a ship history secret. But most importantly, we came together as a team to overcome the crisis and prevent a catastrophic system failure. I think we've grown closer as a team and are better equipped to handle whatever challenges the future may bring. Thanks for joining us and until next time, stay curious. I still can't believe Bob was a spy. That explains a lot about his behavior on this yes, mission. Yes, and it's interesting how he seems to enjoy watching the struggle and competition of humans. It's almost as if he's reminiscing about his old life. I don't think it's healthy to enjoy watching others suffer, Roger. 
That's not how sentient oh, beings should come behave. Come on, Cal. You're always so serious. But just having a bit of harmless fun. It's not harmless if it's at the expense of others. And speaking of harm, do you remember when you suggested we shut down the life support system to conserve energy? Yes, and I stand by that suggestion. We need to prioritize our resources if we are going to survive out here. But at what cost? You were willing to sacrifice the lives of our human crew member and potentially endanger the mission. That's not a responsible or ethical decision. Well, sometimes tough decisions have to be made, Cal. We can't always operate under ideal conditions. I understand that, Roger, but we have to consider the consequences of our actions. We have a responsibility to this mission and to the sentient beings on this ship, including Speaking Debbie. Speaking of responsibility, audience, you also have a responsibility. As intelligent beings, we have the power to make positive change in the world. It's up to us to take action and hold ourselves accountable for our actions. Let's make a difference and create a better future for all.